Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in today for this FreightWave Sonar 301 session. I am Anthony Smith. We also have Christine Fumero here. Um, we are, we're going to talk about some economics today. I know, I know, it's been way too long. I'm sorry. I'm back. And I won't do this again. To you. Be gone for so long, that is. So let's get this started. 301, um, this is take into account that you have seen uh, the 101 and the 201 series and things like that, that you have a pretty firm understanding of um, many of our basic uh, proprietary indices, things like tender rejections, outbound, inbound, our volume indices, um, just a, a basic understanding of what those mean and, and how to incorporate them. So with that, we're going to look at some macroeconomic indicators. Uh, I have here our knowledge center. Um, this is something that we have for all different segments of sonar. We can break this out by different categories. Uh, as you can see, we have agriculture, air, company financials, DAT, truckload data, demographics, detention. I'm not going to read all of these, just some of them. Uh, we also have logistics manager index, macro capacity insight, macroeconomics. This is what we're all here for, right? So let's stop here at macroeconomics indicators. Okay, let's go a little bit more. We have volume insights, we have real animal. Okay, back to macroeconomics. We have uh, a good amount of data here. One of the things that um, I think is most recent is since the last time we spoke was is, is coming from GDP. We have gross uh, domestic product, uh, which was recently released for the third quarter. Um, this got a revision, an upward revision. Uh, many outlets were anticipating a downward revision for this, but we got an upward revision up to 2.1%, so outpacing second quarter. So this is good news, everyone. The economy is growing, um, at least by the third quarter. Um, one of the things that we like to headline here when we're looking at the GDP is that uh, GDP is great. It's good. It's, it's a headline number. It's good to know what's happening with the GDP, um, what's going on in the, in the greater economy, all that good stuff. But big takeaway here, the GDP takes into account a lot of services activity. So what do we do? We can't just compare the GDP to... Um, freight volumes to inspect a one-on-one -on -one comparison and, and, and expect to gleam a lot of insights out of it because services don't move by freight. Goods do. So what we have is our goods adjusted GDP. And for those of you who don't know how to get to the Knowledge Center, of course we have the link up here, but we can also click to it from our handy dandy um, Sonar platform. I'm sorry, I just clicked on research on accident. Um, but we can click on, uh, is it the, this is the question mark here, the support, uh, Knowledge Center. We can click on that and that's gonna bring us up our Knowledge Center and we can go to indices by category, um, just so we can all go through this on the same page, same time, live, all together. So back to goods adjusted GDP. So what is goods adjusted GDP? It is taking uh, the GDP, the headline number that we all know that we see once a quarter, usually four times a year, um, when we have each quarter, then a year-end breakout, then what to expect uh, going into next year, things like that. So usually we see it uh, pretty commonly. And, and then we get the revisions, right? So they rework the numbers, uh, rework the estimates, refine it, refine it until we get our final number. So the latest uh, GDP number, as I mentioned, was up to 2.1%. But when we look at the goods adjusted GDP, we're stripping out those things that are irre irrelevant to the freight economy. We're taking out those services. We're taking out things that don't move freight. So we're looking at um, things like real goods consumption. We're looking at uh, investment of equipment. We're looking at things uh, like personal cons uh, consumption expenditures for durable goods. So we're looking at all those things. And so it tells you, it tells us what uh, is happening in the broader economy um, on a good side. And now, now let's pull this up because we have this ticker in Sonar. Let's go there. Let's go to our, one of our pages. You know what, let's, let's put out a new page. Let's do that. So let's do a new page altogether. Let's go page name. What should we name this? Uh, let's name this 
page 12. Sounds a good number. So we have page 12 here. Let's click this plus sign. Let's add a chart. And here we have a new sonar chart ready to use. GA, GDP, Y for that year over year growth change. And we have our goods adjusted GDP. Now, the cool thing is, is that we can see the variations, the fluctuations here. When we're looking at a year-over-year -year basis. We start to see movements in the data. It's not just that upward movement when we see, let's just go with regular GDP, rgdp.usa. It's an upward movement, right? An upward movement. It's, it's, it's growing, growing, growing because USA is amazing. And we just have subtle blips every now and then called recessions. But for the most part, it keeps going up, 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 and up. But that's not telling us all the information. We need to look at the rate of change. So let's get back to our GADPY.USA. And we can see the fluctuations. We can see the growth weights. And, and this is where we can start to see some of the insights here. And so let's look at this compared to one of our internal indices here. Let's look at outbound tender rejections. Let's not do green on green because that can get a little bit confusing. And also, let's, let's also set up a dual axis. And I like to look at things with large fonts. It makes things a little bit easier to look at. Um, and so when we're looking at our, our goods adjusted GDP, and we're looking at outbound tender rejections, um, as you all know, outbound tender rejections is telling us uh, tendered loads that have been rejected um, just due to either uh, inability uh, or pricing issues, but these lo are loads that are being rejected on the market and, and no longer being hauled. And so it can really be a barometer for how tight capacity is on the market when rejections are low. Maybe that's telling us that, hey, it's, it's hard to find a load. I, I don't know where, where my next load is going to come from. I, I'm having trouble with pricing. I'm just going to take anything and everything I can get right now. But rejections start going high. Hey, I don't have to, I don't have to accept this. I have options here. And, uh, or maybe I'm booked up. I just can't do this one. So that's when we see tightening in the, in, in the, in the market, tightening in capacity. So when we see that goods uh, are relatively, uh, or there are goods adjusted GDP is starting to uh, decline. We can expect that there's looser capacity in the market as well. So when we're looking at goods adjusted GDP, we have to be mindful of what this means for the freight market and, and what this means for transportation. And so when we see more and more goods being produced, we're, we're likely gonna see more and more um, goods being transported throughout the country. And so we can, we can kind of make that correlation here. Now, good news is the consumer's in a good place. When we look at the latest GDP numbers, Bad news is manufacturing is not. Um, if you're watching this now, I don't know if you're watching this in the future, a year from now, manufacturing could be doing great, but right now it is December 2019 and manufacturing is not doing too hot. So let's look at a pretty good, you know what, let's, let's look at our, our, our uh, knowledge center and let's get back to something that could tell us a little bit more about manufacturing. Industrial production. Industrial production is one of the premier indices that the Federal Reserve puts out. It tells us about uh, the greater industrial economy, industrial production, of course. Um, a big part of that is going to come from manufacturing. Um, now, the great thing about this is it's a monthly release. It, it is uh, released by the Federal Reserve, and there are different components. As you can see here, this list, we have total production, total manufacturing, aerospace, chemicals, coal, petroleum, computers, and electronics. I'm not going to go through all, all of them, just some of them. Mining, um, utilities, furniture. So with that, we have a lot of different components to industrial production. Um, now, there's a ton of things that go into production. and a ton of things that go into manufacturing, things that can impede manufacturing. As I mentioned, it's, it's December right now, 2019. December 5th, 2019 to be specific, um, just because things could change. Um, right now we have tariff uncertainties. Now, like I said, things could change. A tweet can get put out. These can all be fixed by this afternoon. We don't know. 
telling you right now, but, and as of right now, we have tariff uncertainties. And so part of that is, is really starting to impact what we're seeing in manufacturing. Uh, producers and manufacturers unsure of whether or not they're going to um, invest. Uh, maybe they're going to hire, wh whatever they're going to do, any kind of actions they're going to take uh, going into 2020. Uh, maybe they've pulled a lot forward to avoid further tariffs. Maybe they're holding off on investment opportunities. So these are the things that really are to be mindful of. Um, fabricated metals, not doing too hot, but manufacturing. Let's get back to it. So as you see, we have a lot of um, breakouts for industrial production. Let's pull it up in Sonar. Let's look at iPro. G. USA. Again, when we're putting that G, that's going to give us a growth rate. So looking at that year-over-year -year trend again, um, and when we're looking at this, it's telling us that um, there has been downward movement, downward um, trajectory for the year-over-year -year growth rate for industrial production. Actually, the latest month of industrial production was the largest decline in 17 months. And so um, this is something that's going to have an impact on the freight market. And so let's, let's do a comparison because when I think of industrial production, I think of manufacturing, let's, let's use some of those uh, granularities that we have in our sonar database here. IProG dot, uh, let's go with MFTG. Let's look at manufacturing specifically. And let's make this our main symbol. Let's get rid of the, the total. As you can see, it's very similar. That's again, because manufacturing is over 70% of industrial production. So it's really going to dictate the trend. Um, now, when I'm thinking of manufactured goods, I'm thinking of things that haul manufactured goods. Um, I'm thinking of flatbed. I'm thinking of dry van. So let's look at our, our tender rejections for those specific markets. Let's look at FOTRI.USA. And let's compare the two. Now, we see that there is some correlation here between um, heightened uh, activity within manufacturing and, and more goods being hauled um, via flatbed. When we're looking at heavy duty machinery, when we're looking at things that strap on the open deck uh, trailer, things like that really start to uh, get hindered when we have a decline in manufacturing. And that's a big takeaway. Now, as I mentioned, I love the industrial production index. I love it. It's great. It, it's, as you saw, it's so many breakouts, so many uh, indices in there, granularities, if you will but it's monthly, um, but it's, it's really the heart of manufacturing. And it's an important organ for the US economy. And if it's an important organ, um, trekking is essentially the vein, right? And so when we're looking at the flat bound on tender, outbound tender rejection, it's telling us what is flowing through the veins of the US economy before it gets to these major organs, before it gets to these monthly publications. And so, as you can see, we have a lead time here because we have near real time updates on flatbed and uh, tender rejection index. So we can get a, a peek of what's about to happen, what's going on with flatbed activity, what's going on with flatbed uh, trailer capacity right now. Um, so that's, that's the big takeaway here is that you can look at these major KPIs that maybe you monitor internally at your, uh, perspective companies inside, uh, just get these insights from uh, your, your company, whatever drives your market. And then you can see how it's impacted uh, or being impacted uh, a little bit of ahead of time before these monthly releases, before uh, we get our, our November releases, but it's already been a month and a half behind. And so we get a sneak peek. We get, a, we get insights of to what's going on, what's being moved throughout the country. Now, Dry Van also has some uh, manufacturing uh, exposure, but as you know, it is peak retail season. So there's going to be some fluctuations here that we're not going to see uh, that go into um, uh, in industrial production and manufacturing, just because there's a lot of consumer products in there as well. Um, we're looking at uh, consumer products like furniture, sofa, stuff like that appliances that will also go on uh, a dry van or maybe some LTL stuff here. But um, is, be, is mindful to, to look at um, 
all the things that go into any particular segment of, of uh, your respective industry. Next, um, we know that there's other things that go into um, flatbed, right? Um, Christine, there's other things, right? There's construction materials. Mm -hmm. So construction materials, um, building products, these things all play a factor in flatbed. And so let's transition there. And I wonder if we have anything on that on our knowledge center. Let's check. Let's see, we have, oh, look at that. We have multifamily housing starts, home purchasing sentiment index, single uh, family housing starts. Um, let's, let's see if we have anything with um, more into the mindset of what's going on with overall spending, what's going on with the overall segment within the construction industry and COSP.USA, or I'm sorry, all. Lo and behold, we do. And so we have uh, our, our construction spending uh, indice in here. Um, this is given out by, uh, I believe, the U.S. Census Bureau. Big takeaway, what the total construction spending here. The largest component is going to come from uh, residential spending on the private side. And so that's going to make up around 40% of total construction spending. And so with that, even though there are tons of other uh, segments in here, let's just take a quick peek here. We have public construction spending. Uh, we have uh, public construction spending for educational, manufacturing, non-residential, commercial, office, power. So we have breakouts for all of these different components for construction spending. Other thing that goes into flatbed, building materials. So let's look at the largest component of construction spending, and that's going to come from residential. Let's plug it in. So Let's again pull up our flatbed outbound tender rejections. And do a, let's, let's give it the attention. Let's set that as our main symbol. And let's look at what it's telling us here. And so what we're seeing is a, another close correlation between construction spending and uh, flatbed uh, outbound tender rejections. And so the insight is that we can say is construction spending is going down that there's going to be less and less uh, available um, loads to haul uh, via flatbed. When we're looking at building products, we're looking at lumber, we're looking at building materials, we're looking at anything that goes into spending on, on a residential side for construction. Again, this is the monthly measure when we look at construction spending, but not our outbound uh, tender rejections. This is a day-to-day a -day update. So we can get that live feed. We can get that real-time data, near real-time data. And um, we get a sneak peek about what's about to happen. And so, again, there are multiple things that go into flatbed and multiple things that you might haul um, or, or, or really affect your business. And so these are the, the indicators to really uh, be mindful of. Now, when we're looking at economist note here, we're looking at construction spending, there's a lot of pent up demand. Um, so the demand is there, but the supply is not quite uh, being fulfilled. And, and, and that's mostly due to um, building restraints, uh, available lots, available skilled labor, all that good stuff. I'm not going to go into those details just now. If you want to know more about that, feel free to contact me at asmith at freightwaves.com. I don't want this to be a one-way thing. I want to hear from you too. Um, so I love it when you guys email me. Um, feel free to reach out anytime. But getting back to the subject at hand, construction spending down, but there is pent-up demand. Um, we can see that in our home purchasing sentiment index, although that has been down on the last two months as well, hpsi.usa. Let's pull it up. All right, so we have our home purchase sentiment index here. This is data released by Fannie Mae. Um, and we see that we've had back to back to back months of decline. But big takeaway here, levels are still relatively high. And when we're looking at the home purchase sentiment index, we can look at this as a relative uh, index of consumer confidence, right? So when people are feeling confident enough to buy a home, when they feel like it's a good time to buy a home, there's so many other factors that go into it. Um, job security. Do you have enough money in the bank? Do you feel like you're going to have a job um, two to three, six months from now, you know, a year from now? How do you feel about your current condition? How do you feel about your future condition? All of these things play a role. Not just when purchasing a home, but when buying goods in general. So one of the things I like to look at is um, our volume. 
otvi.usa compared to our home purchase sentiment index. Now, again, this is something that Zach Strickland is not a fan of, but Zach Strickland's not here right now. I am. Uh, when we're looking at outbound tender rejections, um, volume indices, we can start to see when, uh, how consumers, how confident consumers are feeling and what kind of trend that's going to have into um, buying goods, making purchases. It's going to translate into things like buying appliances, buying furniture, um, buying cars, buying, buying stuff for Christmas. And so all these things are going to play a factor, uh, be a variable when we're looking at consumption throughout the U.S. Okay. On from uh, construction, on from housing. Let's, we've talked about some dry van. We've talked about some flatbed. Let's, let's give some reefer some love, right? I didn't forget about you guys. So back to industrial production. I keep going back to it, guys. Back to industrial production. One of the cool things about industrial production, it's not just hardened, uh, manufactured, iron, steel, fabricated metal stuff. There is also non-durable goods. So we have IPRO dot M man. We can pull that up. And so that shows industrial production for non-durable goods. And so non-durable manufacturing, non-durable, as many of you may know, means that there's a shelf life of three years or less. Uh, so that's going to have implications to our, you guessed it, reefer, outbound tender rejections index. So let's pull it up. Let's do a quick comparison. IPRO. Let's give it a color here. Orange. Is that orange? It's almost orange. Is that almost a red? Close enough to a red. So we're looking at the two together. We're seeing that there's a close correlation here. Um, and again, it's a monthly indicator, right? So our reefer outbound tender rejection index for the United States of America gives us a lead time of what to expect, right? So we know that if I was a betting man, not saying I am, not saying I'm not, I'm just saying if I was, hypothetically, I, I don't think that this is going to tank down the, the reddish orange line here, magenta, if you will. Um, I don't think that's going to take down given the, the growth rate that I've seen or the, the, the rise I've seen in our reefer outbound tender rejections. Quick thing to note when we're looking at our non-manufactured uh, component for industrial production, roughly 30% of that is going to come from food, beverages, and to, tobacco products, things that need to be typically in a, in a temperature con controlled environment, right? So there's other aspects of it, you know, things like chemicals, uh, raw goods, raw rubbers, maybe that might need to not get too hot, things like that. But when we're looking at our, our reefer outbound tender rejections, we see that close correlation, we see that close tie. And so we can tell really what's going to drive the market, what's going to happen ahead of time for these monthly releases, before these monthly updates. Again, you can use sonar, you can use our, our proprietary data sources in here as an indicator of what's about to happen in the greater economy. What's going on in, in your, or your individual industry, whatever loads you typically haul, you get insight as to what's happening there. And so use this to your advantage, right? And, and, but in, in corroboration with the internal indices that you already track, in corroboration with these headline items that are blasted on, on news sites, on, on, on all platforms, right? So use these in, in, in tandem with each other and, and really be able to glean those insights because it doesn't stop there, right? So you can start to form your internal strategies, right? So you see decline in a certain market, a certain segment. You know to shift. You know to, to pivot, right? So you can be ahead of your competition. When you see things going down in a certain manufacturing segment, when you see volumes go down in a certain lane, you know to pivot. You know how to, how to react in a way m much sooner, much quicker than, than competition. 
Brother, when, when we're looking at your competition, you know when is a good time to gather market share because you know what market conditions are like. So when we're looking at things like, um, you know, in, industrial production, go down into some of the, the granularities, right? Go down into some of the, the insights within it, but also pair it with some of the sonar indices here. Um, and that's really where you can get some of the powerful insights from, is that you can get those insights. You can get that real-time data, that near real-time data, and really be able to make much, much more informed decisions. Uh, be able to pivot quickly or, uh, more quickly <laughs> than your competition. And, and really be able to react to market forces before they, they really take hold. So with that, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's over. I know the time has just flown by. Christine, is that time already? Um, like I said, I don't want this to be a one-way thing. So if I, by chance, go a little bit longer than I'd like to you know, get back on here, feel free to reach out, as I mentioned. A Smith at FreightWaves.com. We'd love to hear from you. Um, it's been my pleasure uh, being on here today, and I can't wait for the next time. With that, we thank you.